someone disappears. Hmm. So the uh, as, as you've seen in the in the note, the theme is I've done a practice that's specifically geared towards the process of relaxation. And of course, you know, you can unfold that kind of practice and develop that kind of practice in many different kinds of ways. This is a practice I put together with that specifically in mind. <clears throat> so that's the orientation tonight. If you're looking for a high powered stimulating practice, you're in the wrong class. Come back next week when uh, we'll do something else. Okay. But so tonight it's definitely about centering the attention. Uh, we're going to work a little bit with the area of Agni Sari, Agni Sara. And uh, uh, this area beneath the navel, which is quite important for the process of relaxation, because it's here where we focus our attention, and it's here where quite a lot happens yogically. If you if you keep your focus around here, it's a bit like you can melt you can melt any extraneous stress if you keep your attention focused on that area, which we use a lot in meditation <clears throat> for slightly different purposes, um, but it can actually help to reduce any any sort of stress in the body and stress in the mind and the the nervous system okay so this area sometimes i talk about it in yoga as the you might have heard me use the term havankun havankun is a slightly strange word basically it's like uh, it refers to the process of the ritual fire in indian tradition so everything goes into that fire ritualistically to transform it so this area gets referred to through yoga through the indian tradition as the havankun where the uh the fire sits and develops both both that way and both downwards. Okay, so if you think about fire as moving and radiating, it's also cleansing and purifying. And actually, although it doesn't seem like it, it can be calming. So we're going to work through a series of floor, floor practices. And I'm just going to set you up by way of those preliminary postures in group zero. Do some breathing practice as well later on. Uh, well, first of all, now and then later on again, we'll do some more breathing practice again. So the posture work will be mainly familiar, but we're just going to sequence it in a particular way so that we definitely work on, on those areas that where tension tends to build up. So we're not talking about relaxing just the body here. Obviously, the mind is what, in a way, moves the body. So we have to focus on our mind as well. But in terms of the body, those areas that tend to accumulate tension are the low back, the shoulders, the neck, pelvis. So those are the areas where we often, not, not exclusively, but predominantly find our stress building up habitually so okay that's it if you would like to come into the semi-supine position i'm going to do everything from a side on camera view tonight <clears throat> let's take your place in a semi-supine position with your feet resting on the floor and your knees apart arms resting on the floor um you can place your head on this foam brick if you want to or, or a, a blanket folded or something like that <clears throat> So this is like our primary position where we're going to start off from in our practice. I'd like you to take a minute or so to focus the attention, settle the attention and rest the attention into the body and your mind as well. Just get a sense of gauging how you feel, gauging how your energy is, how your body feels. And inwardly looking, noticing your mood, because your mood dictates quite a lot how you relate to your experience. And so we find that if our mood is a bit sort of dry and spread out, as it were, not very warmed up, we'll tend to kind of resist a bit more what's going on behind that mood, as it were. So remember, we come into our practice with a, an attitude of kindliness. It might not be an immediate experience that we have, but we try and Cultivate that attitude of kindliness through the practice. Yeah. And whilst we're cultivating this awareness of the body and the mind, we're not trying to focus on one particular static thing at any one point. So mindfulness is never really about fixating on a particular point. It's more about the, the open dimension of awareness. What's presenting itself to your experience at any one moment? whether it be bodily sensations or mental thoughts. 
So cultivating awareness is awareness that's more open to the ongoing change of, of whatever's going on in the body mind. Again, this is how we use our yoga through, through mindfulness. So we're particularly aware and interested in these, these elements of our experience that change. So taking the attention to the breath, see if you can let go of the area of the spine as much as possible onto the floor. So we'll keep the first few minutes of the breathing practice really, really easy. Just want you to start to think about breathing diaphragmatically. So breathing down, imagine breathing down from the base of the throat all the way down towards the base of the navel into this area that we're talking about that's referred to as the, the Agni center or the Havankun. So you're breathing down and expanding that area beneath the navel towards the pubis a little. So it rises up, broadens out. As you exhale, it sinks back down again. I want you to do that eight times, following the breath very, very clearly through the body, right the way down to that area beneath the navel. See if you can stay with all of the sensations there throughout the whole process, not letting them out of your awareness. Keep a smooth, continuous presence of awareness and a smooth breath. Okay, not forcing the breath. Keeping the area of the, the spine very, very soft, very supported by the floor. Neck, face, and the root of the tongue, also very soft. So when you get somewhere near to the end of those eight cycles, we're now going to practice eight cycles of two to one breathing. So as we breathe out, we breathe out longer than the in-breath. Okay. So you might build up to the breath being two times, as it were, twice as long as the inhale, and you might not, but don't let yourself feel starved of breath at any point. Okay, so inhaling for four, for example, exhaling for eight, but only if it's comfortable and don't try, don't let the breath, the, the breath lag anywhere. Don't feel like you're gasping for breath at the end. So if you're not able to breathe out twice as long as the in-breath, then just do what you can comfortably. Yeah. Again, keeping the rhythm pretty much the same as before. It's diaphragmatic breathing, but we're emphasizing a little bit more of the exhalation, drawing the belly back towards the spine just a bit more firmly than before. And you need to do this at least for eight, eight cycles to start to see the effect of this breath. doesn't need to be done much more than 20 to 30 cycles to get the effects of it. It's a fairly immediate effect. Okay, so you're inhaling, expanding the belly, exhaling, drawing the belly back in and pushing gently in towards the floor and letting go. Okay, just for the eight cycles, you may have already done more, but now I want you to come back after the next breath, come back again to the diaphragmatic breath, just as before, lighter, but still breathing down into this area beneath the navel. 
And we're going to get a sensation here or try and cultivate at least the imaginative sense of things melting in this area. So things descend down there that we don't want, that we want to alleviate ourselves from. On the exhale, they move down beneath the navel and they melt and disperse. Okay, so this is a melting pot. This is a, a purification point. Okay. So you might get the sense or an, or an image of a small flame of light down there. It doesn't have to be a roaring fire. It's not a furnace. It's just a small flame that keeps burning away steadily beneath the navel. So bring your knees up now and keep your spine very long and your head centered, looking straight up perhaps. Take the forearms inside the thighs. Once you've brought the knee up, you're then going to press the forearms into the insides of the thighs just to draw the thighs open through the groin gently. Keep the head back on the floor, spine completely rested on the floor. No need to push too hard. It's enough almost just to have gravity doing this, but you're just aiding the opening of the groins a little bit with the arms. Keep a keen awareness of your breathing here, okay? So all the while breathing down into the same area, breathing out. Softening the hip joints as much as you can. So we're beginning the practice with a little bit more of, I suppose you call this more yin type practice, but this is only just uh, a few practices within the sequence today. I'm not gonna do the whole practice like this. You're bringing the knees on to back in and bring the feet onto the floor, same distance as before. Okay, heels underneath the knees. <clears throat> Pressing your feet down, you're going to lift the spine and pelvis off the floor. Bring the arms onto the floor behind you. Arms of the hands facing up. Don't worry about lifting the tailbone here, just lifting the pelvis as a whole unit. And as you exhale, the spine will naturally roll down to some extent, but don't worry about keeping the pelvis lifted, specially lifted, okay? And again, so pelvis lifting. In fact, let the pelvis drop down slightly so that you find yourself curving the lumbar as you come up. You want to encourage the spine to curve. Yeah. And as you exhale, smoothly bringing the spine pelvis down. Let me do this once again. Inhale. Smooth movement, lifting the pelvis. Exhale, spine rolls down from the upper part of the spine, naturally towards the lumbar. <clears throat> One last time, holding it up there this time when we come up. Arms above the head, palms facing upwards, gazing up to the sky. And to lift a little bit higher, first of all, just shift the shoulder blades down a little bit. So bring your shoulder blades downwards and keep the chin drawn away from the top of the chest slightly so that the gaze is up and you keep the curve in the back of the neck. So the cervical curve stays there. Okay, so we want to flatten the neck out. And continuing to breathe in this way that we've already set up. Four more breaths in that position. Okay, rolling down, smooth movement all the way down. Once you're down on the floor with your pelvis, you're gonna pick up the left leg and fold it over the right leg. So just crossing the thighs as high up as we can. And then spread your arms out, height of the shoulders, palms up, palms down. It's, it's up to you. You can do either way. And then with your right foot on the floor, you're just going to pick up, push up your pelvis and take your pelvis to the left side a little and place that down. Okay. And then we're going to 
push the uh, the right foot down so that the legs straighten out a bit more, even though the left leg is crossed over the right leg. And then we're going to twist the legs towards the right side. Okay. So you can then, if you want, take the right hand onto the outside of the top of the left knee, if you want to. Yeah. So the twisting, the folding of the leg shouldn't be too intense. We don't want to feel like we're pulling the pulling too much on the external part of the hip joint. Okay. See if you can ground the shoulder blades as much as possible, turning the gaze towards the left side if you've got space in your neck. And then keep this relationship with the breathing. Okay, so we're still focusing on very much breathing down beneath the navel. Okay, shifting your right arm out to the side, bring your legs back to the center just by themselves. And you might need to bring your foot in towards the pelvis a bit more and then unfold your legs that way and fold your legs the other way. So the left leg, sorry, right leg comes over the left leg. Small adjustment with the pelvis, taking the pelvis to the right side. Okay, and then letting the legs fall gently towards the left side. Keep the shoulders grounded initially. And then if you want, you can take the left hand onto the outside right knee. It's up to you. Might not be necessary. We've got the space in the neck. We can turn the head towards and the gaze towards the right side, looking straight out along the arm to the space beyond the fingertips. Coming back again to the breathing process, just noticing how the breath in each posture is actually adapting itself, modifying itself. So diaphragmatic breathing is never the same thing in, in within different groups of poses. Each pose, it manifests a bit differently. Aiming to build up a breath that's smooth and steady and even, free of stops and pauses. And bringing our legs back up again, arm out to the side as we do that. And then we unfold our legs and place our feet once again down on the floor, pelvis width apart, looking up to the sky, take the arms down by the side of the body. And on your next in breath, you're gonna float up again with the pelvis, then the spine, taking the arms back, palms facing upwards. And on your out breath, floating down very, very smoothly, the spine comes down first, then the pelvis. But as you're lifting up, make no special effort to lift the tailbone up, okay? So just let the legs press up the pelvis so that we encourage a curving of the spine. And then as we exhale, the spine comes down naturally first and then the pelvis. Do that three more times.
following through with the breath as much as you can with the movement. So keep the exhale extending with the length of the movement. One last time coming up. Inhale. All the time it takes to take the arms back, we're breathing in. We're going to maintain the position. Tuck the shoulder blades down a little bit. We want to keep the shape of the neck as it is. Gazing softly to the sky. We keep the root of the tongue soft and the breath long and even. Okay, and then let yourself float back down again, spine, pelvis, coming back to a neutral position, semi-supine. Now, do you have a belt handy? Uh, so I'll ask people to bring a belt or an equivalent. So you can make sure that you've got one of those things, a belt or something that can act as a belt. Once you've got that, so from the semi-supine position, we're going to place the belt underneath the right foot. And I'm going to ask you to bring the belt back towards the heel, not on the heel, but just in front of the heel. And we're going to keep the left foot bent, left knee bent rather, left foot on the floor. And then we're going to extend up halfway the right leg. Okay. So I tend to ask people when they're doing this to keep the arms long. So the shoulder blades stay really firmly down on the floor uh, rather than going too high or keeping the elbows down on the floor. So just think about keeping your arms extended naturally. Um, and then just feel that the spine is centered and the pelvis is centered. So you're not off center in relation to your pelvis. Okay. Grounding the whole spine, come up with a halfway extended leg. Re-engage with the breath again, and then we're going to simply extend the leg a bit more. So that may mean foot extension of the leg, it might not. <clears throat> Make sure you're not restricting the extension of the leg by pulling too hard on the belt. Okay, so the belt is there just to help us then draw the belt a little bit towards uh, the foot, the leg a little bit towards the trunk enough to initiate a bit more of a stretch across the back of the leg, okay? So it should be a very clear set of sensations running across the back of the leg. Yeah, I'm gonna see if we can just tolerate that without backing off. <clears throat> Keep the breath moving through the body. So we're not going to do a full-blown elaborate series of leg stretching. We're just doing one thing, two things actually, not three things today. So I want you to let your left knee drift out towards the left side so that the pelvis and the groin opens at the front. It doesn't need to come onto the floor. Take both bits of the belt into the right hand and then extend your left arm out at the side at the height of your shoulder. And then you're going to let your right leg drift out to the right side keeping the leg lengthening, maybe even turning the foot towards the ground a bit, okay? So keep the spine centered on the floor as much as possible. So we're turning the foot inwards, uh, outwards rather, outwardly rotating the leg as you turn the toes towards the floor. Find your stopping point, find your limit, and then just fo focus on extending the leg from the groin to the heel. And see if you can just gently stretch the leg up towards the head, as if bringing the foot towards the head a little bit. Yeah. Keep on breathing in the way that we've started out breathing into the 
the area of the fire pit, as it were, between the navel and the pubis. Okay, and then before we lift this straight leg up, we're going to bring our left knee back up to where it was and then shift the right leg up, keeping it straight. Once it's above, slip off the belt. Okay, and we're going to change the belt and put it underneath the left foot, <clears throat> just in front of the heel. Okay. And then semi-extending the leg up, keeping the arms long, shoulder blades grounded, back of the neck and the face and the, and the root of the tongue really, really soft, as soft as they can be. And the upper back as well. And gradually moving more and more towards the vertical with the straight leg, extending the heel upwards, broadening the base of the foot. And then using your belt and your arms just to gently draw the leg a little bit more towards your trunk so that you, you definitely feel that sense of stretching through the whole back of the leg. Yeah, a set of sensations of stretching. Okay, taking both parts of the belt into the left hand. First of all, now let the left or uh, the right knee drift out to the right side, and your right arm drift out as well at the height of the shoulder. And then let your left leg, as you turn it towards the floor, start to drift out to the left side. Neither of the limbs, the legs are going to reach the floor, most unlikely. Yeah. So a bit of an emphasis on rotating the leg outwards and drawing the foot upwards towards the side of the head, just gently, okay? Keeping the gaze upwards or keeping the gaze to the right sides up to you. Again, soften the root of the tongue, the eyes looking out softly, face resting. aware of what's going on in the leg, the extended leg, because it's probably wanting to stretch a bit more. And you'll probably find that it will lower itself down gradually as the muscles begin to release the tendons and the ligaments. Okay, and now we're going to bring the right knee up. So right knee floats up again. And then we bring the left leg up. <clears throat> Taking the belt into both hands and then slipping the belt off. Coming back to semi-supine position for a moment. Just take a still point there.
And then once again, we're going to ask you to press down through your feet and lift your body back up in Dedvi Padam. Uh, coming back into a bridge. This time keeping the, the arms down on the floor by the side of the body. So you might need to adjust your shoulder blades down. Under, tucking them under. So now look for a lift that comes from the point of view of tucking the tailbone under a bit more, lifting up from the base of the tailbone to the sky, engaging the thighs, Arms rolling out slightly from the shoulders, keeping the shape of the neck. Looking to the sky, keep your, the root of your tongue soft and the gaze soft. Okay, releasing down. Again, the spine comes down first, naturally, and then the pelvis. And then I'd like you to straighten out your legs on the floor so that you're in a straight line, horizontal straight line. And then we're going to bring the arms up and around so that the palms of the hands sit behind the back of the head. Elbows drawing back towards the floor. Then you're going to slide your body, so you know this very well, this lateral bend is very familiar to you. So you're going to slide your body towards the right side. So you create like half a banana in a lateral bend. And then walking your heels towards the right side as well. To the point at which you feel you can't really move mechanically anymore, physically anymore. Gazing up to the sky. And then focusing the breath around the left side of the body, so the left side of the torso, naturally more open through the rib cage. We're going to take six more breaths into the side of the body there. And now one smooth movement all the way to the other side without hesitating, you switch to the other side. And keeping the neck and the face and the head, gaze, root of the tongue, very soft. Yeah. Okay, sliding back into the center. And then we're going to roll onto the right side. And from the right side, I'd like you to come up to all fours. So from all fours position. Just spreading your feet out the same distance as your, your pelvis. Okay. And slightly wider than your shoulder. So you've got the small finger on the side of the hand, just inside the mat. So you're a little bit wider than your shoulders. And you might have the hands just slightly further forwards than usual, a bit further forward. So you, your arms are inclined, a bit of an angle like this. Okay. So looking forwards, we're going to bring the body forwards and then down. 
keeping the elbows close into the side of the body, coming all the way down and then up to Bhujangasana, pressing back through the feet, looking forwards, gently lifting the chest, head and shoulders. Okay, coming all the way down, pressing up again. As we come back, we come back via Balasana. So as we come back, we tuck the tailbone under and we try to sit back all the way towards the heels without touching the heels. Okay. And then come forwards again, keeping the feet grounded, lowering the chest forwards and down. Once you're down, it's not quite the eight point pose, huh? not quite. And then back into Bhujangasana again. Looking forwards, keeping the elbows tucked in. Exhale, down again. Pressing up. Tucking the tailbone really under firmly as you come back. Just back to the Balasana stretch. And then forwards again, one last time, lowering the chest, shoulders down. Extending into the legs, Bhujangasana. Exhaling, pressing back up again. As you come back, remember to tuck the tailbone underneath very firmly. So you're lifting the lumbar spine up, sort of filling out the kidneys. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> and as you come forwards, we keep the space between the hands and the feet. We're going to tuck our toes under and lift the pelvis. Coming to downward facing dog. Keeping the ears floating just between the upper arms so that we the, the neck is long, nice and long. So it's as if we're trying to move the crown of the head towards the floor, forwards towards the hands, rather than pulling the head back in with the shoulders. Yeah. Keep the focus on the breath moving down, or in this case, up because we're upside down. So you're moving the flame, the flame changes direction when you're upside down, yeah. So the flame burns down towards the sacrum. As soon as you turn the body upside down, the flame burns down, as it were, downwards, points down towards the sacrum. And when you're sitting or standing, it burns upwards towards the navel, yeah. Okay, exhaling, come down onto the knees. And then we're going to sit in Sukhasana. Okay. <clears throat> so from Sukhasana, which we're going to use as a base for doing some twisting work and then some shoulder work, I'd like you to use the belt. So we'll start off with the right leg in front of the left leg. And Although for some folks they can probably catch hold of clothing and things, it's it's better to use a belt for, for the purposes of this particular practice, okay? So you want to take your belt doubled over underneath the knee so that it's close to the top of the thigh, the right side. So as you reach round, as we're going to do now with the left arm, I'm going to take the belt in my left hand, okay? And then my right hand is going to come over towards my left knee. And so this aids me in the twist. I'm not, I'm not placing my hands on the floor here. So once you've got yourself set up in terms of the legs, <clears throat> you want your knees wide, feet close in towards the groin. Axial lengthening through the spine, spine nice and long. And then take hold of your belt and turn yourself towards the left side, okay? So you can use the belt to an advantage just to help you twist a bit more deeply. We want the pelvis to be neither dropping back nor pushing forwards. Keep the spine uh, as neutral as you can. And then place your attention once again on the area between the navel and the pubic bone. Okay, we're going to take 10 cycles of breath here. Okay. 
grounding the pelvis, keeping the spine gently lengthening upwards towards the crown. Keeping the pelvis neutral. Then releasing smoothly to the center. Just take a pause in the center for a couple of breaths. And change your belt to the opposite side. <clears throat> okay. Sweeping around with the right hand, taking hold of the belt or whatever you've got. So it wants to stay high up. Yep. And just really clarifying the length in the spine. You're going to rotate from the lengthening of the spine to the right side. So we're encouraging our own opening of the chest between the frontal shoulders, sternum opening. Keeping the pelvis as neutral as we can keep it. So we're not rocking the pelvis, pushing the kidneys in. Not excessively dropping back either. Yep. And releasing your grip, then come back around to the center. <clears throat> We're going to change the position of our legs so that we've got the other leg in and the opposite leg out. We're still in Sukhasana. Feel free to use a block if you want to raise up a little bit. It makes it easier for you. Take your belt across your lap. We're going to come back to what we just did in a moment, but we're, we're breaking it with this, with the shoulders. So taking the belt, as you know, we like to take the belt down into the crease between the thumb and index finger without making a hard fist out of the head. So you're just closing the index finger and the thumb around the belt. Keep the belt, keep your hands rather a bit wider than your shoulders and you're gonna smoothly draw the belt up and we're gonna come all the way back, making the belt, taking the hands a bit wider and down towards the kidneys, just touching the kidneys lightly with the belt. And then inhaling. We do this the whole while keeping the root of the tongue and the face soft. We come all the way forwards and down. And then we let go of the belt and come back to the center again. And then open just a bit more than the shoulders and do the same thing again, inhaling, lengthening. Taking the hands just a bit wider as necessary to be able to take it back towards the kidneys and down. Okay, back up again. Keeping the spine neutral as possible. You're just gonna breathe as you need to breathe through this little sequence because it's too difficult to try and dictate for anybody else how to breathe in and breathe out whilst doing this. So. Spine neutral, root of the tongue soft, gazing towards the horizon. So as if like you're poised and rested, even though there's movement going on. 
around the trunk and around the head. It's only the shoulders and the arms really that are moving. So you could almost be meditating. And this does a lot of good to the structure of the upper back and the shoulders and the upper chest. Yeah. We'll do this three more times, okay? Three more cycles. Up and over after this one, one last time, we'll go through the cycle. <clears throat> and over. And then we're going to fold our belt again and we're going to take it around, just as before, and under the right leg, right side. Okay. I'm going to reach around with the left arm, catch hold of the belt, and return to the twist. Okay, release one smooth movement, change over to the other side. No hesitation, straight in with the belt. So we're going to become aware of the, the myriad sensations of the breathing in this pose, because it really highlights how the whole wall of the torso becomes involved in the breathing here. So as we activate the diaphragm, we start to feel that all the intricate and complex movements that take place with the breathing because the, the twisting poses highlight much more the dynamic of diaphragmatic breathing in the body more than other poses. So just draw your attention to that area. Just notice how the breath activates different parts of the body as you go through your eight or 10 breaths here. Okay, releasing back to the center. You can let your belt go, whatever's there.
So from here, we're going to come into a lateral stretch, very simple lateral movement, sliding the right hand out, sort of in line with the hip joint, going out to the side, pick up your left arm, sweep it up and over. Take the hand behind the back of the head if you want to. Find your limit in that, or find your sub-maximal position, as we sometimes say, like your sub-limit. So it's important to keep the pelvis grounded here and keep a sense of gentle lift out of the pelvis, even as you laterally bend. Okay, so we don't just compress everything that's on the right side of the body. There's a sense of lengthening and at the same time curving the spine. Keeping the pelvis very grounded. Keeping the face and the roots of the tongue soft. You can gaze around and up under the arm if you want to. You know, whatever seems to complete the sense of the pose for you. Looking forwards, looking down, it's up to you. Be aware of your neck, be aware of how it affects your neck. Small finger side of the arm lengthening from your shoulder. The little finger is extending. Up on the in breath, let the in breath carry you back up. Take the left hand down and immediately, without hesitation, pelvis grounded, lifting up the right arm. Same thing, walking the hand out. Again, we're not we're not simply compressing everything on the left side of the body. We're consciously lifting out of the pelvis with the trunk and extending the small finger through the right arm. So that can be tricky to do because the impulse is to simply curve and collapse down. Okay, but there is a sense of which we're lifting up and keeping that sense of lifting up through the spine and opening and curving. How does it feel in the body? How does the mind respond to it? What's the energy like within the pose? We're getting an impulse to come out, desire to stop, or we're quite happy here. Okay. Now, inhale, use the in-breath to carry you back up again. Come back to a neutral position for a moment. You're going to interlock the fingers nice and closely at the roots and extend the palms forwards. And on the next in-breath, sweeping the arms above us. This time, the thumb lifting up. So I'm just really clarifying this sensation of lengthening from the pelvis, this time both sides of the body, so it's symmetrical. Opening up the space between the navel and the pubic bone, still breathing down into that area. We haven't stopped that process. And keeping the face and the tongue soft, gazing forwards. And then without losing the height in your spine, you just gather up there, let the arms drop down onto the floor. And it's just touching the floor. Okay, so from here, we're gonna, we're gonna transition. We're gonna go into uh, the lunge position. So I'm gonna turn around side on. <clears throat> okay, so we'll do this from downward facing dog. Okay, so you're coming into downward facing dog. And then looking forwards towards the front of the mat, we're going to lift up and step the uh, left foot forwards. Right knee comes down on the floor. Okay. 
Once the right knee's down on the floor, we're going to push ourselves up. I'm just going to sort of taking it easy tonight as we go in and out of the poses. We're going to raise up. So as we raise up the right arm, we're going to lower the pelvis down a bit more. You see that? So simultaneously lowering the pelvis, raising the arm. And then as I exhale, nice full exhalation, I'm going to rotate towards the right, uh, the left side. Right elbow coming over the left knee. So I do that on a full exhalation. I really empty out the breath. And then I join my palms together. Okay. Once the palms are joined together, so a technical and traditional way of teaching this is to bring the thumbs towards the sternum, towards the heart center. But sometimes that can feel a bit strong. So it can, it can suddenly feel like you're overly forcing the thoracic to twist. So only use that as a general guiding instruction. Don't use that as an absolute must do this. So the aim is to just rotate the trunk, keep the spine lengthened gently. Turn the head. So it's very intense on the breath here. So we're gonna still encourage the breathing down to the navel area. Lots of restriction of movement. And breathing into that restriction generally. Another five breaths. And looking to the floor, turning the trunk to the floor, towards the floor, hands down. <clears throat> but to come back into downward facing dog again, and then I'd like you to go and go on with the practice on the other side at your own pace, okay? okay from downward facing dog, stepping your opposite foot forwards. Same setup and entry. Inhaling, lowering the pelvis, raising the arm. Exhale fully, rotate. Okay, coming up, releasing to turn the body towards the front, the floor again, hands down. One final time coming back into downward facing dog. This time will stay a little bit longer. Just refining the pose in whatever way you feel you want to refine it. Okay, then coming down onto the knees. Um, so we're going to practice a little bit of, I mean a little bit, I mean just a couple of minutes of Agni Sada. We're not going to do many, many cycles. And then we'll practice some kind of inversion. And then what I'd like to do is guide you through, rather than doing a meditation, I'd rather guide you through a Shavasana tonight, if that's okay with you. So it sort of makes sense in the context of this practice. I'll lead you through. 10 minutes of Shavasana, okay? 
Um, so you can do this if you want, or you can you can avoid it, and you can do something else for a few minutes. And there are two two main positions we can practice from. One is kneeling down with the trunk lifted and the pelvis lifted, so we're we're tilting forwards. Or you can do it standing up. So it's the same thing in terms of the position of the body, but you're standing up. I prefer to do it standing up myself because um, what happens is I it just allows the pelvis to move more with the in-breath and the out-breath. So the pelvis can articulate itself a bit more easily. So what you do, just to remind you, I know some of you have done this a lot in the past. Knees are bent and you're going to take the hands onto the thighs with the thing, fingers inwards, not outwards, okay? Fingers inwards, elbows wide. And what you do is, if you remember, so it involves, it involves Mula Bandha and it involves Uddiyana Bandha, but not in a static way, not in a holding way, but rather in a moving dynamic way. Okay, so what we do is we exhale. And as we exhale, we imagine that beginning from the root, from the perennial floor through a contraction that moves up. So the contraction begins in the perennial floor and moves along through the base of the belly, through the navel, all the way up to the base of the ribs, the under ribs. So that's the exhalation. As we inhale, we inhale from reverse. So we inhale from just under the base of the ribs, the crest of the ribs, all the way back down to the perennial floor. Remembering to relax everything as you go down, back down to the perennial floor. Okay, so it's contraction on the way up and relaxation on the way down. Yeah, so it becomes like a wave. So because I'm not there, I can't get really close in. Uh, it's difficult for me to kind of tangibly guide you any more than that. So just have a go of that. So you're contracting from the perennial floor as you exhale all the way up to the crest of the ribs underneath the, uh, the sternum. Pressing in gently as you inhale. Inhale from where you just left off, all the way down again to the perennial floor. And you notice the pelvis moves backwards and forwards. So. so keep this uh, movement fluid, not pausing anywhere, not straining anywhere. You can keep it very, very soft, very subtle. Or you can practice a little bit more firmly, which is said to have a more potent effect on the, on the digestion, on uh, the area we've been working on, this, this uh, area of the Agni, of Ankun. So it stimulates that area. It requires quite a bit of concentration and focus, otherwise you can easily lose the sequence of what you're doing. So you can do this 10 times, 20 times, 30 times, 40 times, in any one session. I'll just do another minute of practice.
All right. All right. I'll stop there. It's a good daily practice to do. It's better if you do it every morning, actually, before you eat. It's the best uh, best time of day to do it. So, okay. So I'd like you to do some kind of inversion now for about, how long have we got? What's happening there? Yeah. Let's say five minutes to do an inversion, okay? I would suggest just keeping it simple. It's in line with the practice in general. Supported against the wall with bricks. If you've got bricks.
Now, when you're ready, taking your own time, move out of that posture. Take any movement you want to make before coming back to rest in one form or another of Shavasana. So I'd like you to be horizontal. That's the only prerequisite. But you can be supported or unsupported as you like, with or without blankets. <clears throat> So hopefully you'll have at least 10 minutes to do this practice. I'm going to guide you for five minutes or so, and I'm going to leave you be. Good. So we've been making the effort, conscious effort in the practice to bring about some of the sensations and experiences of relaxation, which I'm hoping you've benefited from. So we're just going to carry on that process, but this time from the position of Shavasana, where we really allow ourselves to go into the last part of the practice of letting go. So Shavasana is really about letting go consciously. So you're deliberately bringing about a state of rest. I would like you just to scan through your body a few times. I'd like you to travel up and travel down from the crown of your head through the different parts of your body. Think about Traveling up and traveling down, first of all, on the surface of the body through the skin, all the sensations on the surface, and then coming up through the body at a deeper level, through the flesh or through the muscles, and then down through the bones. You might do that several times without, without laboring it, without being too, too slow. As you go through the body, Paying particular attention to any parts of the body that are resisting letting go. Just encouraging that area to, to let go, asking it to let go. Just giving yourself permission to let go of those parts of the body that are perhaps a bit resistant. There will be muscles, there will be muscle groups even, don't want to play ball. Some internal tensions. There might even be some mental tensions. So we're going to encourage each part of that tension to let go. And you can imagine all of these tensions, as we've already been working this evening, we've been letting them melt, melt in the area of the Havankun, in the area between the navel and the pubic bone, where the, the gentle flame has been there, still is there. And it generally burns up these, these tensions, these impurities. So the fire of Agni is transformative. It's transformative in a, a local, immediate sense, and it's transformative in a long-term, more profound sense. When you scan through the body a few times in that way, you just come to rest in the area between the eyes, around the area of the third eye, and giving up the weight of the head, relaxing the neck, resting the skin on the face, resting the tongue, right down to the root of the tongue, resting the eyes right back into the roots of the eyes, to the sockets, Nothing to look at, nothing to read, 
You don't have to take in any perceptions of the external world. So the senses can begin to rest within. Same with the ears. The ears can rest down to the roots inside the brain. Tongue can rest in its root, in its place. The brain can rest towards the back of the head, towards the floor. There's nothing to project out. There's nothing to think about now. And then let your neck joints and the shoulder joints just rest. So imagine a sense of them floating away. The arms floating out. The head floating gently away from the shoulders. And this brings a sensation of space around the neck, shoulders, head area. And the heart center rests down through the body as if it was sinking down to the back of the body, then through the floor into the ground. Sternum soft, chest floating in space. And then the area of the pubic bone, the genitals, the pelvis. You can imagine the legs floating out of the pelvis. We release the buttocks, the urogenital muscles, pelvic floor, resting down. And this sense of letting go extends all the way through the legs so the knees opening and floating down to the feet, through the toes, all the way down to the soles of the feet. There is this sense of opening, letting go, softening. You let go of any attempt to control the breath, the breath in the body, just doing itself. And we just rest in an awareness of the experience of being here in the body mind as it is. And just continue to practice like this. <clears throat> 